like me, you probably have no idea what the barometric equation is. But unlike me, I doubt you can actually teach yourself in a few minutes. So we're here today with Dr. Massa to get some sort of insight as to what the barometric equation is, what it means, and how we can relate this to our day-to-day -day lives. Okay. So, Dr. Massa? <laughs> so the barometric equation is essentially just a description for how the pressure increases with depth, but instead of in a liquid, in a gas, right? Okay. There, there are differences. I mean, a, a liquid you can't compress, but a gas is very easy to compress. Right. So, so in a liquid, we had the change in density was rho GH. Right. So here it's going to be a little more complicated by things, but we'll still get that same general expression that the pressure goes up the further down you go. Okay. Well, a pretty common example of a gaseous environment is the Earth, right? Um, you can look at the surface of the Earth, a person standing there experiences a certain amount of pressure from the gas above them. And we know that at some point, uh, that ends, yep. right? You end up in outer space and there's no more gas left up there. So at the very least, uh, we're going to see that it goes from a high value of pressure to a low or basically non-existent value of pressure. Sure, yeah. Now, one thing um, with gases is that here, if I write down, you know, the ideal gas law, PV is equal to NRT. Okay. Um, let me bring the V over just to illustrate this relationship. We've got P, we've got N over V, and R and T. And what you notice is, well, numbered of particles divided by the volume. That's essentially, it's a, it's a density. Right? right, where density was the mass of the object per volume. Here's the number of actual gas particles right. per volume. But at a given temperature, these are just numbers. And I think the important takeaway is that pressure and density in a gas are going to be proportional to each other. Okay. Now, we're all comfortable with the idea that the density decreases the further up you go. Right, and, and so, so as a result, hand in hand, you get less pressure at right, that point, right. too. So the actual way, the rate at which it decreases, uh, it's an exponential decrease. Okay, um, you guys have probably seen that already with uh, radiation physics. Maybe you looked at it in high school. Um, yeah, it comes, it, in, it comes in a lot of places. Uh, yeah. Radiation is definitely a, a good one to... to it's talk. the only other one yeah, I can think yeah, of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, so there's going to be this exponential drop-off. And, and with exponentials, whenever you have an exponential term and you have something up here, Often what you're looking at is a comparison or a ratio of two terms. Okay. In this case, we're going to look at the energies. Now, there are two energies involved here in the atmosphere. There's the thermal energy. So that's the actual energy that's used up in those particles moving around. Yeah, it's, it's, we can think of this as sort of the average energy per particle. Now, there's going to be some constant of proportionality. That's called Boltzmann's constant. That's just a number. But what's important is it depends on how hot the gas is. Okay. Right. And then compare that with what else is acting up there. You're in well, the atmosphere. You've got... Thermal energy is allowing you to move around, but you're still being pulled down by the actual Earth itself, right? Right. So let's talk about a potential energy, okay. gravitational potential energy, right? We, we're familiar with the idea that the higher you are, the greater your gravitational potential energy. And, and so we've got exactly that here. All right. So the term, this distribution of, of seeing a few particles up here and a lot of particles down there is going to be based on this ratio of gravitational potential energy to this thermal energy. Right. And, and it drops off, it decays as we go up, so it's right. a negative value there. Right. This is going to be still proportional to the actual pressure that we see. Yep. And in reality, if you were to write that out in full... So let's write that out as E to the minus. Now we're going to have a, a bunch of terms in here. Here would be the mass of a, mm -hmm. of a gas molecule. G is our constant. And H would be the height above some reference point, maybe the, at sea level height. Um, in meters, and then we're going to have the thermal energy. This again is a constant, Boltzmann's constant, and the temperature, which we're going to keep in Kelvin, not Celsius. Right. Now, it's a pretty complicated expression, but literally all it's showing us is that this pressure, i.e. the density, drops off as we go up, because this mg and this kt are going to stay pretty much the same for a given system like this, and you're literally just watching something decrease in value as it increases Right. Same general trend as a liquid, but slightly different details of the yeah. relationship. Yeah. 